Alright, so a little while later, I uh, cut out the hole, and yeah, it's big, and I don't care because I got a plan for that. Alright, and uh, trimmed the both ends of the uh, silicone hose to fit, a little bit of an angle on this one to match the angle of the tube itself, and that one's on there pretty good too. By the way, this was a uh, I had to buy this piece special. This was a three and a quarter to three inch because I got a larger than stock throttle body and the other one was not going to go over that. So I picked this one from uh, intakehoses.com. I think it was about 20 bucks or so, maybe a little bit more. Um, I'd have to check. And then as it goes through here and into the uh, fender well, um, it goes into a 45 right there. And that 45 I had to buy too. These pipes are not going to line up. I mean, maybe in a stock installation, they lined up okay, but I don't see how. And that's okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised they fit as well as they did, but I bought that 45 um, from the same place. And uh, I got it to where it's on there pretty good, minus the clamps, of course. And then on into the intercooler on this side. So um, I'm thinking that that's pretty good for right now. And I'm going to work on my extra special thing for that. Um, by the way, there is just a little bit of clearance between the down pipe and the turbo and this intake pipe. It's not much, but there's some. And I'm going to wrap that down pipe anyway. So I'm not worried about heat so much as rattling. And uh, I'll keep an eye on that as time goes by. Might have to put a something in between there just to keep it from rattling, but we'll see. Right now, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. All right, so I made a template of the area around the intake pipe and board there. And this is a yoga block. And it's kind of a stiff foam. It's really good all-purpose foam. It's very dense. And it's a closed cell. And it's obviously ruined, so no one cares um, if it gets trashed or not. And I've made uh, rubber isolators out of this stuff before. It works out pretty good. So what I'm going to do is cut out two pieces of this. It'll be about uh, maybe three quarters of an inch thick. And down the middle will be a channel for the edge of the fender. And so it'll basically be a two-piece grommet to go around that. And uh, once I've got it cut, I'll paint it with uh, Plasti-Dip, which is flexible enough and won't uh, probably eat it up. We'll see how that works. All right, so this is the first part that's, uh, that I've made so far. And it looks pretty ratty right now, but i still got some fitting to do. Essentially, the relief is for the side that's towards the inner fender. And it'll tuck in like this. Fuck. Come around here. Right, it's going to tuck in like this eventually. And uh, the grooves on the side will be what hold it in place. But, like I said, I've got some more trimming to do before it'll even think about going in there. But once it does, it and its partner will close up that gap nicely. And it'll be a soft solution. Alright, that's the two pieces in there. And it's going to be a snug fit, and that's the way I want it. It'll look a lot better when it's painted, so that's fine. I'm going to be happy with that. Um, it'll look very natural when it's done. <laughs> I said natural. Okay, this is the first time that I've had all of the uh, hot side and cold, pipe, cold side piping attached at the same time. So it uh, looks like most of the fitment issues are resolved. We've got the passenger side header down to the down pipe, which comes down out there and then routes across the front there. And while I'm here, the intercooler cold side goes here. There will be a blow-off valve on top there. Looks like there'll be enough room inside the uh, inner fender cover. We'll see. And then moving over to the passenger side. The hot side continues up. There's a spot for the wastegate. That'll come out and then up on into the driver's side header and then you can see the rest of the 
cold side piping coming out of maybe coming out of the bottom of the compressor all right and then on this side of the intercooler it comes out here and then goes up into the inner fender well that we've seen before through the fender and on into the elbow into the throttle body and the down pipe comes out of the turbo and then down towards the exhaust I haven't tried to fit the exhaust yet and that's okay that'll come later uh, I'm sure I'll encounter some issues there and essentially my main concerns at this point is don't have a lot of clearance between the down pipe and that but once I get it wrapped I won't worry about it too much really it's only going to be under boost for short periods of time and that wrap should take care of the uh, the normal heat the plug wires have to snake down in there in a pretty narrow area and again the wrap will help out with that plus the plug boots that I got for the wires are pretty long they should come up at least to where the down pipe is so I think we'll be all right on that uh, spot and uh, so essentially at this point I still have to punch a hole in the uh, sump for the oil drain back I might need to clock the oil on the compressor side just a tad to get it to be a little bit more vertical it's not quite vertical yet and I'd like it to be it's not far off and it'd probably be okay but the uh, instructions and everything I've read says you want that to be as vertical as possible so um, I will remedy that by loosening these bolts here and clocking it just a little bit to get that more vertical I'll probably have to relax the uh, compressor just a little bit so that it doesn't move because it's in there pretty good now there's clearance for the lower pulley and the belt not a lot but enough and trying to get some focus action there um, not much to support this long intercooler pipe here so I might wind up uh, may wind up putting some form of a strap on it to uh, hold it upwards a little bit and I'll probably have to uh, move some of the power steering lines for the cooler just a little bit I don't know if it's kind of hard to see it there but these two power steering cooler lines are somewhat in the way I'd like for this to come up just a little bit more and stay there um, so it's not just hanging by the weight on the uh, silicone boots even though they'll be torqued down they're nearly not designed to bear any kind of weight and uh, I don't want to have problems with that later so I think what I'll probably do is put some form of a rubber strap around this intercooler tubing um, in this area here and support it up onto the uh, frame rail or someplace close to that should be able to do that without too much of a problem and that'll take some of the strain off of the uh, the couplings all right so unfortunately I gotta basically take it all apart again because I need to uh, secure that manifold on the passenger side and wrap both the manifold and the downpipe and hopefully I'll have enough to do the crossover tube the manifold and the downpipe that's my goal I got a hundred feet didn't use too much for the uh, passenger side header and I learned some lessons that I won't repeat on the driver side namely I probably won't take that wrap right to the edge because it complicates getting the uh, header bolts in there so lesson learned on that um, I'll probably start them an inch or so away just to make sure I don't have problems getting the header bolts in and the minor amounts of heat that escape around that is going to be less than the headers were before that weren't wrapped so shouldn't be big issue then we've got lots of uh stuff to do after that point as well um, got to get a new belt got to refit the new map sensor and uh, a couple other things that we'll get to and the oxygen sensors I was torn because I've got two oxygen sensors and uh, there are provisions for oxygen sensors on both of the headers where I could put the stock well I won't call them stock because neither one of them are stock um, but then they've also got provisions for another um, single oxygen sensor on the downpipe and so I could just run one and uh, 
basically call it good after that. Or I could have each bank have its own oxygen sensor. And really, you're thinking what's the best way to do it is probably just to have one on each one. But uh, my newest oxygen sensor is a LSU 49, and the old one's an older um, AM version. And they don't always agree exactly 100%. So if I'm going to use one, it'll be the, the newer one. And I really don't want to buy a second one. So I think I can run it fine probably on one. Um, but I'll make that decision later. We'll see how it goes. All right. After I took those header bolts out, I made sure and marked which ones need to go in first. Uh, that one on the number, well, the second hole, let's see, that would be the number two cylinder on the forward side. That one's got to go in first because the bend in the pipe is such that if you, you can't get it started with the header in place, you have to get it started with the header loose and then move the header in towards the head with the bolt as it goes or you're never going to get it tight so i just need to remember to make sure to put that one in first and hey don't move these all right so i clocked the uh, turbine section to where it should be more or less perfectly upright i made a couple witness marks on the back here see if we can see them maybe not there we go and i turned it about that much they lined up before i clocked it basically just undid all those bolts around there and then uh Tighten it back up again once I was done. And while I've got it on the bench here, I'm going to set up the connect the fittings for the oil supply and return. This is the oil supply line. Obviously, it comes from that uh, braided line I installed earlier, and it fits on the top here with a gasket and two screws. And then the bottom has this bigger fitting here, the drain, and it connects with a gasket and two screws as well. And then the hose, obviously, two hose clamps, one for the top, one for the bottom. And then this fitting is the one that goes into the uh, oil pan, all right? This is a very light fitting. It's aluminum, obviously, and it's, wow, I just hope I don't ruin it putting it into the oil pan. So I have to be very cautious on how I punch that out and make sure that the threads are halfway decent. Um, I thought the kit came with a tap, but if it doesn't, I'll have to get one because that's certainly not going to make its own threads in there unless this is some sort of super titanium, but I don't think it is. It's very light though, so I think it's aluminum. At any rate, that's what uh, I'm going to do straight away. Okay, so a little bit of fussing with the uh, hose clamp is <laughs> pretty much right up against it. That bolt... No matter how you clock these things, or so I assume, these nuts always wind up exactly where you don't want them to be. But there was just enough room to get that uh, down past there with a little bit of persuasion without ruining it. And same thing over here, not much clearance between that hose clamp and the side. So it shouldn't be a problem. They do recommend putting this on before you uh, put the turbo on so I did put some uh, Loctite on the nuts here blue and I actually put just a little bit of the copper RTV on either side of the gasket there I just don't want any oil leaks at all um, this fitting here is uh, o-ringed to the bottom and I tighten it down the best I can it's not even remotely tight from in the package and uh, you really can't get a wrench on it very well and I put a witness mark there. I probably won't be able to see that once it's in the car, but on the off chance that I can, I'm going to come back and check it later and see if it moves because I'm not real confident that that's, uh, that that's going to stay and it didn't really lend itself well to any kind of Loctite or anything like that. So the, uh, on the top side, I didn't want to put in any... Um, Teflon tape on that because I was afraid it might get too hot, but when it was tight, it wasn't clocked properly, and to tighten it up would have made it 90 degrees out from where it needed to be. So a few wraps of Teflon tape put that in the proper orientation with a leak-free, hopefully, um, tightness. It's aluminum, so you can't really reef on it too much. And pipe threads always seem to need a little bit of Teflon tape, so... Uh, same deal there, blue Loctite on those screws with just a tiny, tiny smear of uh, 
copper on either side of the gasket there uh, probably being paranoid but you know what you can see I had to take that nut out because you can't spin that fitting on with that nut there so I'll put that back in and we'll call it good all right the driver side uh, or passenger side header turned out to be pretty easy to wrap it was one strand and uh, basically because the tubes are so close together I started out with the whole bundle wrapped and then I just as I came down I just uh, went from four to three to two to one and that's plenty um, like I said I don't want to go all the way to the flange on this one because it makes it just too hard to get the tether bolts in there and that's going to be plenty of uh, heat rejection I should say um, far better than just a bare header so I'm happy with that all right I got the driver's side I'm sorry passenger side header installed I managed to get all the bolts in there I put a little bit of red Loctite on all of them because I don't like having to go back and fix uh, loose header bolts um, it's almost essential that you start with this guy right here because there's almost no room for it to come out on that that one and the number one here cannot come all the way out with the header in place so you have to move the header in towards the uh, face of the head um, at the same time so that's just the one thing that's important to note there if you try to do it you won't be able to get the, the bolts in otherwise and then if the Loctite's already set up you'll you'll be struggling to get them back out so uh, lesson learned on the other side on that one uh, this one went pretty well though okay the turbo itself is installed there's four bolts that hold it on this bolt right here is a smaller size than the other three and that's on purpose best I can figure because there's just no room in here um, to get a wrench in there. They said to install the turbo off the uh, on the bench um, rather than on the car. I, I don't think I would have been able to get this header on there with a turbo on it without an extra set of hands because it's quite a bit of weight trying to finagle that in there and uh, my engine bay is reasonably uncluttered so I was able to get a wrench on all the different bolts. That one is on uh, upside down and for the same reason, because you're not going to get the bolt in there because of the the flange for the he, uh, for the turbine section, so it has to go in upside down. I did put just a little bit of blue Loctite on all those bolts, but those are uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the bolts are just a little bit uh, egg shaped so that they lock when you tighten them down, uh, similar to suspension ones that you see, especially on Fords. They use those. Um, so, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I did elect to use the composite gasket rather than RTV or the flat metal one that came there. I just like the idea of it uh, having a little bit of squish. And uh, we'll see how it turns out in the, in the future. But uh, for, right, for now, it's on there. One thing I'm not really keen on is this, <laughs> is this oil line. It's like way back here. Now, I'm all about having more, more than you need but this is going to be kind of ridiculous and I may want to find a way to reroute this uh, so it's not quite so long um, and so more to follow on that later but uh, for right now the turbo is in I think I'm going to continue to work on wrapping the crossover pipe and get that installed and then we'll be pretty close to the completion of the hot side with the exception of the uh, the wastegate and the downpipe so I'm gonna keep rolling okay so serpentine belt <laughs> let me try to save you guys a little bit of time when you use a piece of string and wrap it around the pulleys to try to figure out how long your belts gonna be you'll come out with a number that number will be wrong I'm just telling you right now it will be wrong and it'll be short It'll be short by about two inches. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. One, because the string that you use stretches, no matter what you use. Um, I used any, well, I used twine a couple times in a different kind. And I also used uh, actual safety wire like this because I came out wrong the first time. And I'm like, okay, well, that won't stretch. It stretches too. Actually, it uh, comes out even, believe it or not, shorter. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Plus, the way they measure these belts, if you come out with, say, 66 and a half, and you go tell them you want a 66 and a half belt, and they look it up for you, it'll be the outside. It won't be the effective length. So, I'm just telling you right now, if you wrap a string around your pulleys and get 
what length you think you need by measuring that string, just go ahead and add an inch and a half to two inches to it before you go buy a belt or you'll be making three trips to the auto parts store. I'm just telling you right now. So that's your PSA for today. Um, if you use a tailor's tape like this, they don't stretch as much. But the problem is most of these are only 60 inches long, maybe five feet. I'm sure you could probably buy longer ones, but typically the ones you buy aren't that long. So, um, yeah, have fun with that. So, fortunately, I got a pretty good auto parts store around here. O'Reilly's uh, took good care of me. But I did have to make three trips because I was short, short, and then just right. And you don't have a whole lot of uh, um, adjustment here. So, take your time. Try to get it right. All right, while we're in here, the uh, hose that goes out of the water pump into the heater hose has got a pretty good kink in it. So rather than try to get too ridiculous with it, I think what I'll do is I'll just take about take that hose off and take about a half inch off of it, and that'll bring that hose just a little bit closer to the uh, spout where it comes out, and that should relieve some of the, the kink in the hose. If that doesn't work, we can take more drastic measures, but I do like to have heat that works fairly well. And I don't want it rubbing against the uh, alternator while it's uh, um, sitting there either. So I'm going to try to adjust that a little bit here. All right, so as I get towards the final fiddly bits here, um, in order for the adjustment rod to uh, articulate in the way it needs to and the jam nut to be able to spool down, this little area right here, is in the way of the jam nut especially and it also keeps the rod from having the right angularity to where it needs to be here without using a whole bunch of spacers which would then make this bolt too short so all I'm going to do is just smooth this out and, and blend it in a little bit and, and relieve it right there with the Dremel. Alright so there's just the relief I made on there. That should be enough for where that jam nut moves freely and doesn't uh, bind up. All right, so the final stack up goes like this. One washer, the rod end, two washers to create even more clearance between this because I really didn't want to start trying to um, cut into the rest of the alternator. It made enough, but just had to add one more washer there. Uh, plenty of articulation on the rod end and plenty of bolt left over over here. And then I had to use a lock washer on this side because this is not a uh, uh, nylock, and that's fine. Um, and then down here, wound up just being one washer behind, one washer in front, and then the nut itself. And that still gives me the um, freedom for all these jam nuts to move back and forth and the rod to extend and contract the way it needs to. The uh, heater hose is now in a better space, a little bit more clearance there, and uh, should not be touching the alternator once it's tightened down, and plenty of clearance between the alternator and the turbo, even if I have to put a blanket on it or put a uh, aluminum heat shield between those I can do that if I start encountering problems I'll keep an eye on that all right serpentine belt is on that's pretty good tension there I think just from the experience and feel jam nuts are tight wow a little burr fucking sticking out there got me bastard um, alternator bolts are tight all the allen heads are tight down there Still kind of flimsy. I could tell when I was tightening it, it was putting a little bit of torque on the alternator. Um, so, yeah, pulleys probably not exactly in line as well as it might be from the factory. But uh, we'll see how the belt uh, wears after the first uh, couple hundred miles of driving. We'll see. Alright, so got all the rest of the uh, pipes wrapped, including the down pipe. was able to get the whole thing. Still had this much left over from a 100 roll. Looks like a lot, but there's probably maybe 6 or 7 feet left there. But uh, it worked out good, so I'm pretty happy with that. Start getting it assembled. I think it's going to look good once it's installed. Alright, since the uh, last little video, I got a few things put in. I got the turbo obviously mounted. Look at the down pipe now. Wrap came out pretty good. Um, rerouted the spark plug boots. And yeah, they're touching a little bit, but it's just the 
heat wrap that's touching. I think they should be fine. I've got another heat wrap for the coil wire. And uh, I don't want to reposition the coil because of the way I've got the wiring running to the back of the car. Probably there's a better spot for it on the other side, but that would involve a lot of changing around of wiring that I don't want to do. And uh, so next, uh, I'm going to cover that coil wire and uh, probably work on, let's see, I also got the oxygen sensors hooked up both left and right. And I decided to go with one for each bank rather than putting one back there. And uh, that should be fine. I got the heat wrap on both the turbo oil drain and on the oxygen sensor cable that goes to the rear on both sides. So they should be reasonably protected from the heat. So I'm kind of fanatical about that, making sure that they're not going to be any um, heat related issues. And all right. All right, there's the uh, protection for the coil wire. And so I think that's good. Should be fine for when I put the cold side piping in, which will come a little bit later. Uh, next will be to, I say next, really what I want to do next is make the hole in the oil pan, but I'm having a hard time tracking down a pipe tap for it. So that might have to wait a little while, see what else I can do in the meantime. Well, I'll be amazed if that doesn't leak a little bit, but it's threaded. I got the tap all the way in there. Obviously, I'm going to change the oil and try to rinse out the bottom of that front sump the best I can um, before new oil goes in. And then I'll mean a quick oil change, too, just for whatever gets trapped in the filter. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean that up a little bit more and then feed that fitting in there. And uh, I'm going to use a healthy dose, dose of uh, RTV, too, because... I'll be amazed if that doesn't leak. All right, just a little progress report on what I've been up to today. Um, I got my upper radiator hose in. Yeah, I went ahead and bought that Summit kit, and I kind of like it. I think it looks good. I haven't fully connected it yet because I want to dress up some of the wires and stuff before I do any final connections. I got this uh, Easy Loom Master kit, too. It's got that nice split um, sleeving that I'll use to take care of some of the wires that uh, got a little bit frayed over time and uh, the alternator wires and stuff need to be rewrapped so I want to take care of that before I button everything up um, let's see what else I've got the um, underneath I finished up with the uh, oil return line to the oil pan and uh, covered it and heat wrap it fit pretty well there's nothing to really see down there the barb came out okay but I put a good uh, a good bit of um, RTV around it just to help it from not leaking and uh, then I proceeded to get the rest of the hot side piping installed and it took some finagling to get it set up there is a flex pipe in the middle and people have their opinions about them but there's no way this is going together without it so um, we'll hope it uh, holds up I'll put some copper 
RTV on this uh, slip joint there because it really doesn't slip much and unless you have these things oriented properly it there's going to be gaps and leaks so it took a while of loosening and tightening loosening and tightening and kind of working from both ends and in the middle to get everything uh, uh, to where it fits pretty well but it's in there now I think next I'm going to work on probably the wastegate and the uh, cold side tubing and make sure everything still fits the way it should it's going to probably be pretty close as it goes across the front here but it fit before and uh, we'll see how that goes don't think I did anything else off camera except for that but uh, yeah she's getting close now boy I'm not going to want to drive in the rain much so I'll tell you that I don't drive it much in the rain to begin with but uh, I don't want this uh, thermal coating to get wet as much as possible I might even make myself a uh, under tray even though it'll trap a little bit of heat I think it might be worth it to keep the debris and uh, rocks and junk off of the uh, the turbo piping so we'll see about that later all right another progress update I've uh, finally got all of the cold side plumbing in and attached and buttoned up with the connectors and all the way to the throttle body there is just a butt hairs worth of clearance there but I think with the heat wrap it should be fine if it does transfer a little bit of heat I don't think it's going to matter all that much. I'm not going to be under sustained boost for any length of time, I don't believe. So I think it'll be all right. We'll watch the air temperatures and see what happens. Um, the cable routing came out pretty good. Got the uh, alternator uh, cable wrapped and also the cable that comes off of the uh, distributor. And it's out of the way of the throttle and all that. And should be plenty of clearance on the down pipe here if I need to I'll put some wrap around it but I really think it'll be fine at three inches of air gap there tends to do a pretty good job of insulating and uh, so I think we're really getting to the point where the hard parts are fairly well complete I still got to do the wastegate that's about it now when I ran the uh, cold side tubing they are pretty close to each other um, they're not actually touching, but they're pretty close. So again, if I'm not under sustained boost for a long period of time, uh, I may elect to wrap part of this cold side just to protect it a little bit more. Um, under normal street driving, is it going to pick up a little bit of heat being that close to the exhaust? Yeah, sure it is. Um, but that's prior to passing through the intercooler as well. So uh, hopefully the intercooler will be doing its job to get rid of some of that excess heat before it gets to the throttle body it'd be nice to not have it in the first place but uh, so be it so still got to hook up the wastegate here but all the rest of the uh, underside work is essentially done with the exception of touching up a little bit where I was doing some welding and uh, put some paint on there to protect it and a few other miscellaneous items and I'll give you updates on that stuff as I get it done but I think for now I'll work on getting the wastegate connected and uh, then I'll move on from there. I did put the blow off valve on this side but uh, the running and routing vacuum lines and all that's going to be a separate project because I want to completely kind of redo how all the uh, vacuum lines route. Um, I worry about things like check valves for the brake booster and the vacuum system that goes to the um, heater box and air conditioning um, solenoids and whatnot inside the car and I want to make sure that I don't have any unforeseen problems with that same thing with the PCV system uh, so that's going to require some uh, probably some parts and a little bit of thinking to get everything where it needs to be and plus the uh, map sensor needs to be redone as well so all that kind of ties into uh, vacuum and boost referencing and uh, I'm going to handle that in another segment all right